Welcome to Gazette Sports Week, sponsored by 54 Fitness. I'm Dan Russell with Kevin Trollo. You know, kind of an abbreviated type show this week. We are taping before the 4th of July weekend, so, mm-hmm. you know, we're a little kind of slow. Because of the holiday, but things slow down a little bit in the summertime. Uh, start off with the local sports scene, uh, you know, the Hamilton Hotshots. Uh, they won two out of three last week, beat Bentner 13 1, and they split a home and home with Egg Harbor City. Went down there and lost 4 2. Came home the next night on uh, on Wednesday, the 29th, won two to one. And you saw the game against Ventnor. Saw the right? game How against Ventnor, thirteen, 13 to one. Game. Obviously, pretty good. Uh, yeah, they kind of busted it open. I think in the third inning, put like seven runs on Ventnor, and uh, Brad Mountain made his home debut for the season. Uh, threw a pretty solid game for him for Bradley, five five inning game for him. Uh, you know, didn't have his best stuff. I mean, I think he was a little bit, you know, a little tired, a little sore. You know, he's mm-hmm. getting a little older now. He's not going to like me saying that, but. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but he, he looked pretty good in this one. I mean, you know, they hit the ball real well. Had had pretty much the whole lineup there, which was nice, except for Junior Mejia, who's still away uh, back home in the Dominican. But, um, you know, Juan Mejia swung a nice bat in this one. Uh, you know, Kenny Morgan White continues to tear the, the ball apart. I mean, he's swinging a real good bat. Probably the hottest bat on their team right now. Uh, Nicky Crescenzo had a couple hits, scored some runs in this one. So, I mean, you know, a, a nice win for them. Then they go down to Egg Harbor City the next night. They lose 4-2 to two down there. Didn't see the game, so I'm not really sure what, what happened. Yeah, you said you haven't talked to Sammy Rodeo I haven't yet, talked to so. Sammy since the Ventnor game. But they did bounce back. Kevin Baxter threw a nice game with a 2-1 win down there. And he's kind of, I mean, Baxter right now I think is, is legitimately the one guy. Throwing yeah, their pitching us a race. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, they, they did lose Billy Jackson. One of the other pitchers also plays a little third base. Billy signed with an independent league team. So, I mean, good for him. I mean, kid uh, just got out of Rutgers Camden. So, you know, he's hopefully maybe starting a little bit of a pro career, maybe make himself a few bucks and get yeah, some that's exposure. Good. Maybe they'll be able to get him back for the playoffs, depending yeah, on how long I, I the so. season is. I think here. that season ends towards the end of July, so maybe, you know, when the, when the playoffs start up, they might be able to get him back and get him back in the, in the, in the full for that. Uh, they, they have a uh, off for the, for the weekend, mm-hmm. you know, for 4th of July. Off until the 6th of July, yeah. right? Well, they'll play Northfield, a team that's kind of coming on pretty strong. Yeah, we said they've won seven of nine, I right? think so. They, they, Northfield's been playing real well. They had a little bit of a slow start, but some of those younger guys starting to swing the bats, pitch pretty well. Uh, there's some Hamilton kids on that team, too. Chris Caprio Jr. plays on that team. Uh, Alex Balsteri, big red plays for them. Uh, you know, so they're looking, probably looking forward to coming up here. I was going to say, so they, a couple of the guys on the team know each other. That always exactly. makes it a I mean, little more fun. Hamilton beat them early in the year in the season opener down there. Uh, I'm not sure if they've played again since then, but... Yeah, so that'd be a good test for for the hot shots on uh, at the lake, and then the next night they host uh, Margate, the second team, the Green Wave, come in here, and they go down for a big showdown down at Margate on July eighth against the Hurricanes. Next you Friday know, night, uh, be, be, the, be the third meeting, last one of the regular season for these two teams. Coming this week, Hamilton was fourteen and three, Margate's thirteen and three, so they're only a half yeah. game back. So you know that game's kind of looming pretty big as far as that that race for first place and getting that top seed to find out you know whoever's going to wind up playing. You know, probably yeah, that's going to end up being their most important regular season game. So Exactly. So, you know, I mean, ACBL, you know, kind of tight at the top right now. You talk about Hampton, you talk about Margate. Have Seekins only about a game or so back. Mm-hmm. I think they came in this week at 12-4. and four, so, Okay. You know, so they're, they're threatening. You, talk, you still, talked about so, before the season that you thought it would be those three teams at the absolutely, top. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I want to say Egg Harbor City, after after split with Hampton, they're in fourth place. They're playing pretty good ball, too. So, I mean, you have you know, Northfield, I think, in fifth. You have four or five teams right now that are – yeah, maybe capable. Yeah, contenders, more, yeah, contenders or less, yeah. more or less. Contenders more or less. You know, so you might, maybe you don't see a Hamilton Margate final this year, which would be kind of be nice, maybe for the league. But mm-hmm. I'll have to see how that plays. I still kind of think it will be those two at the end of the day. But uh, you know, I'll have to see how that plays out. But I mean, again, you know, uh, uh, for the hot shots, you know, when, when they're at full strength, you know, it's a tough team to beat. You know, they, yeah, they have good pitching. The, the staff's yeah. pretty deep. They're swinging the bats pretty well right now. I mean, you know, they, they had have some ups and downs with the offense, but I think that's going to work itself Always out. happens in baseball. It's, I don't think they should worry about that too much. Exactly. We, we talked some more baseball, a little bit of softball, too, with the Little League teams. Uh, softball All-Stars, the 12-year-olds, they went down to Dennis Township on, uh, on the 30th, and they won a District 16 championship. They beat Northfield 13-10 to mm-hmm. to win that. Kind of capped an undefeated run for them through the tournament. I think it's their third or fourth district title in a row. Uh, they they opened up. They beat. Uh, I forget, they need to be Greater Wildwood to start the tournament. Then they edged Northfield five four, and they hammered. I think it was Dennis Township eighteen and nothing or something like that to get to the final. Eighteen and nothing. Uh, you know the, the Northfield game and the championship game. Though they were down five nothing in this one, scored seven runs in the bottom of the second to take the lead, held off for that thirteen to ten win. So I mean you know a great run for them. They move into sectionals now, which will be. Uh, I think they'll start playing on the sixth up at uh, Harrison. Yeah, I was going to say where are they going to be? I think playing? it's at Harrison Township, okay. and, and they'll play. Uh, I think it's the winner of either District 15 and District 13 play. Uh, Hamilton got a bye in the first round of the sectional. Sectionals will finish up at the end of next week. I think the championship game's on the 10th. Okay. And then that winner moves on to the state. States is up in Lodi this year up in North Jersey. So we'll see if Hamilton can get there. Hopefully they can get through. Yeah. Exactly. The other Little League teams, uh, the Junior League Baseball, those are 13, 14-year-old kids. They got a forfeit win 
strangely enough. Uh, they, they were yeah, supposed the to, team didn't yeah. have enough players on the other o- night. Only three teams in that bracket. Uh, Hamilton along with Lower Cape May and Middle. Uh, lower beat Middle in the, in the first game. Uh, the winner of that game got Hamilton. They were supposed to play on the 28th, but uh, from what I understand, Lower only showed up with eight guys. How do you so, show up with only eight guys to the championship? Well, <laughs> well, well, now, well, now Lower will play Middle, I think, and then the winner of that gets Hampton on the 7th. Okay. Uh, that game's down at Middle Township, so they'll have a chance to win the championship there. Uh, the nine, ten kids, the little boys, they're they're still alive. They 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 had lost, fell in a losers bracket. They they wound up winning. I uh, forget who they played, but they won that game huge, like twenty four to eight or something like that. That put them in a game. Sounds more like a football score than a yeah, baseball. Yeah, they, they score. played July first. They needed to win to stay alive. They win that game. They play again on the sixth. So you know they're still maybe trying to, to to keep their hopes alive for a district championship. Unfortunately for the little league baseball team, the twelve year olds they lost. Uh, they were eliminated. I think they lost 10-9. Okay. So kind of a tough break for them. So they go home. Their, their season's wrapped up. There are uh, uh, the senior league baseball team, which are the older boys. The kids would be like freshmen in high school, freshmen and sophomores. Probably 14, 15. Yeah, they, they're, they're what, they were the only team in District 16, so they automatically got the championship. They opened up sectional play over the weekend. Okay. So surprisingly, usually you don't see a lot of action on Yeah, on, on people usually take weekend, off 4th of July weekend. But, but they'll be playing some games this weekend and a chance to win a sectional title, and then they would go on to states as well. So I mean, you know, that that's pretty much whoops, that's pretty much that for little league. I mean, the, the younger kids, the 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 nine ten softball and the eleven year old baseball teams, they both start later on next week. So we'll have some we'll, we'll do some yeah, we'll be able to recap their on the show after, when we come back on the thirteenth. The show for the thirteenth, we'll talk about that. Um, the only other action locally was uh, St. Joe was supposed to hold their red white football scrimmage on uh, Friday night on July first. There was talk maybe some thunderstorms, so we'll have to see if they actually play the game. Yeah, if, it, if they but, get it um, in you know, or not. A nice little annual tradition they have going on where they kind of split the team into two units and they, they sort of scrimmage each other. Gives you an opportunity to get out and get, get your first look at St. Joe football for next yeah, year. Yeah, it lets the coaches kind of see what exactly they're working with. Exactly. See, real game speed. See how some of the older guys look, see some of the new kids that are going to be mm-hmm. some varsity action this year. That's a lot of fun. you know. And, again, we'll recap that game next week when we talk about you know get our local sports segment again. So. That really pretty much wraps up what's going on locally. And we, uh, well, the other team that would be actually the Stingrays, the swim team, but they were off. They're off for July. Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they go on a road next weekend. On I think it's the 11th. They have a road meet. So again, we'll talk about that on, on the show on the 13th. When we come back, then we're going to have a local guy, Rick Seppi, who a lot, of, a lot of local sports fans know. Ricky's around all the time. Does a lot of umpiring. He's going to talk about that. Some of the challenges that he faces in umpiring and mm-hmm. some of the fun that he has doing it. And that's coming up right after this. Go to Showcase Sports when you're looking for high school sports equipment and apparel. Featuring gear with the logos of the Hamilton Blue Devils, St. Joseph Wildcats, and other high school teams. Gazette Print Shop is here for you or your business. Whether you need a logo, posters, mugs, stationery, t-shirts, and much more, they can design it and make it a reality. Gazette Print Shop will help you promote your business and spread your message. Give your marketing a new direction with GPS. Gazette Print Shop. Welcome back to Gazette Sports Week, sponsored by 54 Fitness. And joining us on the show this week is a local guy. You see him around at all the sports events. Rick Seppi, you're an umpire as well. And thanks yes. for coming up. Thank you. I mean, like I said, I mean, a lot of people locally know you pretty well. I mean, you're, allowed, you're around the local sports scene a lot, you know, having been gone to St. Joe and stuff. I mean, you always been interested in sports? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, all, all my life. I mean, my, uh, my father, uh, who was an immigrant, um, pushed it. Uh, mainly because at that time, soccer was the unknown sport mm-hmm. in the country. Mm-hmm. And... and passionate of Naples, Italy was soccer mm-hmm. and he played. Um, so uh, that was the first thing watching Sunday mornings when they used to show up on the air where occasionally the Italian soccer that just that just started here. Yeah, it was a, a father's son father's son thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, which I think is the way a lot of people get into sports when they're young through their father. How, how about growing up? Did you play any sports recreationally? Recreationally, no. Only because mom and dad because of my height were always afraid. But okay. doesn't mean the backyard, the next door neighbors mm-hmm. you are all bets were off. Same thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, they were just afraid with, you know, low league and all that, that, it, you know, I could get hurt. And anybody could get hurt. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I mean, uh-huh. It doesn't matter yeah. how tall, how short you are, yep. anybody could get hurt. I mean, you know, and obviously, I mean, you've continued to stay involved. I mean, you're a you're big booster at St. Joe. Yeah. And, you, and, now, and now you're umpire. I mean, how'd you get into doing that? Well, basically, the umpire started back in uh, 88. Uh, my father, my godson, uh, said there is no reason why you can't do it. Mm-hmm. And he pushed me. So I started in Mullica Township uh, with them. Uh, I, I was their treasurer and everything when they were starting to form a rec association. That led to, we were at that time, Little League. And uh, he goes, let's go, we're going to Williamsport. And 
I said, oh, cool. You know, mm-hmm. Swissy Williamsport. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize he paid for the whole week and we went to the lowly umpire certification. Okay. So that's what started me doing the umpire. Mm-hmm. So it was just the, the, that's the start. Yeah. Yeah. You said your family kind of pushed you along, so there was no reason you wouldn't be able to do that. When you first started, was there anyone in the program to try to try to discourage you at all? Say maybe uh, you shouldn't be doing this. Oh yeah, there's there's always that. There's, yeah. there's that no matter what. I mean, not to go off topic, but it's just like okay. you, you know, people look at us strip people, and right away they think we can't can't do anything. Mm-hmm. And, and there's doctors, there's lawyers of our statue, and. That was my determination and said, no, no. There, there I'm going to do this. I'm going to yeah. do this, and I'm going to prove you wrong, and, and there's no reason why. I still get it today. Sometimes I walk up to fields, and some of the coaches look at me like, well, whatever. Yeah, we were actually yeah. going to ask you yeah. that if yeah. you yeah. ever yeah. did it Yeah, today. well, whatever. You, know, it, you got that right. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, I mean, the rules are applied by me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just I'm going to call the game the yeah. same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just yeah. watch what you say, and that's why you tell me. And, and this past two years, I, I got rated highly mm-hmm. by the coaches. And that just showed that they respected me, and I and I respect them. I mean, I, I don't throw a player or a coach out unless mm-hmm. it's belligerent. Yeah, it, it's I, I take it. I mean, I'm not one of those guys that right away want to go. You know, they want to be known as you know the famous Great Davis and you know throw somebody <laughs> no, out. But I mean, but, but do, you, do you, sometimes people give you a little bit more abuse? I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say like that. I mean, no, I, mean, I had, you know, maybe they kind of like look at you kind of funny. No, no, not not well. They look a little funny with the strikes. And mm-hmm. Because you know, let's be honest. I don't have to, behind the plate. Yeah, I don't have to crouch. I can stand, which is fine yeah. by me. But occasionally, you know, I have to crouch. <laughs> and y'all... there's a couple, you know, a couple times coaches come up with, "Come on, come on, come on." That's right. So I said, mm-hmm. "Coach, that ball was over my head," which <laughs> means you know, it, it, it's not a strike. Let's let's be real. I, I said, "Come on," and I get right back. But you know, I, 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 that's what it is. Is it is it tougher though? I mean, you know, being. Being short, I mean, is it, is it tougher sometimes when you something you get a big catcher or something like that? Nah, because to, I can you move, I, I move, you know, as the play umpire, I can position myself anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and most of the times, all I got to do is tap the catcher just a little bit. Yeah. And they'll move just that little bit that I need. Yeah. Because after a while, you go to so many games, mm-hmm. the coaches get yeah, to know you, the players little, you know. get to get to know you, yep. and it works. It works out fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what do you, what do you like doing better as far as umpiring? You like being behind the plate or on the field? Either or. Yeah. I mean, it, preferably I'll take the bases only because in this. Time of the year, yeah. wearing oh, all absolutely. that gear, yeah, yeah, we yeah, wear, yeah, we yeah, wear yeah. just the association I even want to. It's just like the major league. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we have uniforms and everything, so everything's underneath. Okay, that stuff after a while starts sticking to you. Yeah, you can't when it's move 90 it. Degrees yeah, out. you know, and, and I, I, I like bases, but the boss puts me. I never have once argued when the boss says you're behind the plate tonight. Hey, it is, it is what it is. And it's not any tougher for you, I mean, than say anybody else. No. I mean, you know, I've been whacked in places just like any other. Any other guy or girl that's done it, no different. I've been whacked in the head, mask fell off, whacked in the leg, come home with a nice black and blue mark. Mm-hmm. You know, it is, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, has your interest in, you talked about how you got in professional sports through your dad. Has your interest in professional sports, do you still follow that now? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, God, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, other than yeah. not wearing my Phillies hat today, I mean, I, I'm Phillies. I mean, I'm like, that's one of the, and, you know, one, one of the well, yeah, it is <laughs> right, right now. now. <laughs> it is right now, but it, it's expected. Um, but, other than any other team, the Phillies are my love. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not an Eagles fan because of years ago. Flyers, I keep hoping, and Sixers will forget about it. <laughs> we'll forget about the Sixers. But, yeah, no. I, the I Phillies mean, are your heart. Yeah, yeah. Phillies are my heart. Um, I mean, that, I, well, that would go away. Cincinnati is my second home team. Okay. Only because Pete, uh, I mean, if anybody comes to my office, you'll see I got Pete everywhere because, you know, I'm a no matter what he did, he did his time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, I follow all the sports. I mean, I'm right now waiting for tomorrow to watch the soccer because the U.S. plays, uh, Italy plays against uh, Germany. Yeah, I mean. yeah, 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 in the so, uh, Euro yeah, Cup. In the Euro yeah. Cup. So I mean, that's yeah, that's my nat- that's my nat- my heritage. So mm-hmm. you know, of course, I'm rooting for Italy. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. So yeah, every sport other than basketball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and with the umpire, I mean, like you said, there's not a lot of people you know your size doing right. that. I mean, do, do you feel like you're kind of maybe. I don't know, setting an example that, that, well, that, that's, that, 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 you that's, know, that anybody can do it. That's you know, one, you of, the, one of the reasons can. more now, today, as in 30 years ago almost mm-hmm. when I did it, it wasn't a big deal. People didn't really care. Now it's becoming to the point where everything is, I, I don't want to say racist, but it's reality TV has uh-huh. really 
really done more damage to people, my statue, than uh-huh. anything. Because we got all these goofy... Yeah, those shows. Yeah, and it's like, oh, yeah. you know, I go back years ago with uh, Hank the Angry Jork and all the mm-hmm. stuff he did. It's like everybody goes, well, you know, that's... I said, no, no, I, I'm, well, I'm an educated gentleman. Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and no, I'm not like that. I wasn't raised that way. My mm-hmm. parents did not believe that. Mm-hmm. My parents were of normal height. My brothers and sisters were of normal height. We were I was not raised that way. I was not treated no different than mm-hmm. anybody else. And... I chose to do this because it's something I like. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to prove that it doesn't matter height or disability, as they would say. You could do it. But you, don't, but you don't look at yourself as being any kind of like disabled. Or no, not at all. I mean, not at all. I don't have the disability tags. I don't park in the, dis- in the handicapped spot. I don't believe in it. I truly believe that's for the person that truly is handicapped mm-hmm. because that's what it should be. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want you to look any different at me because mm-hmm. I don't look at you any no. different. Mm-hmm. You know. You know, it is what it is. You know, that's why I tell coaches sometimes when they look at me, go, coach, we're, we're gentlemen. You know, this is about the kids. Mm-hmm. And I, I say that all the time. Yeah, don't I make this a, yeah. any yeah. more than about right. the kids. I, I said as soon as that's one of my opening speeches, this is about the kids. We are not here to win the Major League World Series. Yeah. Yes, it's nice to win. Uh-huh. It, it, it teaches team morale and all that. But in the end, let's remember who's on the field. Mm-hmm. And I can make a mistake. I'm just as human. Baseball does it. Real base, you know, the major league yeah. umpires do it. I can do it too. Come out civically and say, hey, can I, yeah, yeah, you, know, you may be right. Just remember, balls and strikes announced are a judgment call. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't have instant replay here. Yeah. You know, so, <laughs> so, so it's a judgment call. Right, right. It's a judgment call. You're good enough, you don't need right. instant right. 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 replay. Right. You know, but not to say, you know, I can't blow it. And I do, after the game, walk up and say, hey, coach, that third inning. Yeah. You're right. I, I did. No, yeah. mm-hmm. you, and, and, and they respect that more because you come up and at least mention yeah, it. They'll say, okay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's the way I, you know, that's the way I am. Well, well, what do you think you enjoy most about umpiring? If someone was, someone young was thinking about getting into it, what would you tell them why it's such a good experience? You get to see the whole game. Mm-hmm. I get to see the whole game. And you've seen thousands and right. thousands and, of well, I, 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 That's the yeah. other thing. You get to see different. I mean, I've been, this the last two years since I joined the association, I've been as far as Manahawk and all the way down to Cape May. Uh-huh. Okay, so you're and going games all yeah, over the all, state. Yeah, all over yeah. the state, the association. And it's different. Everywhere is different. You'll never find the same two style coaches. You'll yep. never find the same two style players. And you won't find the same two style parents. Mm-hmm. I could go to some games where parents are so loud that I wish I could put earplugs yep. in <laughs> because it actually distracts me. Mm-hmm. And then you could go to a game where you could hear a cricket. No one's cheering. Nobody's yeah. cheering. It's like, yep. come on, cheer for the yep. kids. It's about the kids. You know, when my father and I used to walk to the lake to go watch games because friends would play, he was the first one cheering for him. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way it should be. You know, you cheer. Especially and, when you're young. You, yeah. you need that kind you need, of... Exactly. That, that's what that. makes you want to keep playing. Right. Yeah. You know, and instead, of every now and then, I'll walk around in between and I'll see parents going... Yeah. It's like, come on, two hours of the day. Yeah. yeah. You want your child. Watch your son back. Right. Yeah. Your Absolutely. daughter or your son or if you're here with you... And the grandparents are different. Grandparents, they Oh, they're the worst because <laughs> <laughs> they are they are like just like you said I mean they're they got blinders on they don't yeah. see anything yeah. you, you know and I love them more because they're the old style mm-hmm. the way it should be yeah. Yeah. two hours of your day that's all we're asking Support so it's really time. just like a love of the game for yeah. you too yeah. you get to experience yeah, that's it and like levels. I said going all over I mean two three let's back a step three years ago I went to a triple A game okay. over here at the lake and I'm just watching because I love I love I used to coach the league so I, I just went and Mark Bianchini walked over goes what are you doing here I said I'm just watching the game I got nothing to do I said what are you doing here you have parents on pile that's not fair well you know we don't pay for this I said you don't have to pay me just I'll do it I, you know give me exercise Absolutely. and he looked at me like seriously he goes yeah I see because when was the last time you did I said you remember back in 93 he goes wow I said don't worry about it it's triple I don't worry about it. Give me a rule book. I'll brush up overnight, and I'll do it. And that's how it all started. So he told Chili Warren, who runs the New Jersey Sports Association, he came down and watched. He goes, you're coming to class next year. We want you. I said, okay. And there's somebody that never knew me, didn't know me at all. And, of course, as everything else, the first time you see somebody, you start, well, can he really, you know? And he was impressed, and that's where I've been ever since. Like I said, I'm doing the States for... Babe Ruth, I'm um, there tomorrow night, all day tomorrow actually, uh, and that's the first time I got that far. Literally, I never got past the district because mm-hmm. then it became you know the senior guys. Yeah, the old yeah, guys. The old guys yeah. always. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Which I understand. Hey, that's the that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Chili's a lot different. He bases it on. 
talent. Yeah. And he wants the best guys out yeah, there. And, and when he said, you're going to Stace, I went, I was like a little kid of Stace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, Stace, you know, for me, it was, it, that was more of a thing because now, once again, I, I, I'm telling people, I we're not different than anybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like any other person. You got somebody tall, you got somebody short. We are who we are. Don't look at us right away, so, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, I, I done junior high basketball, and, and if it wasn't for tax season, junior basketball, I would still be doing it. Mm -hmm. And safety coaches go to possible. I said, not really. I am just at the right height to see everything. <laughs> I, I said, you would be amazing. And, and, and after a couple of games, they went, okay, all right, hey, we like you. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm fair. I don't know your child. I don't want to know your child. Yeah. I come on the field. No objectivity mm -hmm. for me. And, and I do my job. And I walk off the field. I don't care what it is. I said, I, you know, don't do it. I said, unfortunately, this year I got two of my goddaughter's games. And we didn't realize that because I don't get to see the name of the teams mm -hmm. in the schedule. So when I walked off, I told the coach, I said, you know, the third baseman has got my goddaughter. I said, but we can't switch. I already tried. I said, don't worry. She, if she looks at one down yeah. the middle, it'll yeah. be a strike. It's a strike. Yeah. Yeah. And I told her, I walked off to the game. I said, all bets are off now. Yeah. You, you know, I got to do my job. And she goes, don't throw me out. I said, well, I could be star. But, you know, <laughs> you know but all bet. Yeah, and the coaches, both coached, because I went and told the other opposing team just so he knew. And he went, okay, whatever. And they both wrote up, wow. No, I said, no, because that's not the way I am. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, there's no reason to play favoritism because the kids don't learn that. Yeah, no, you know, not the kids at all. don't learn. You know, and that's how I feel. I mean, any coach you ask, I, every time we'll all say that. Every now and then I'll tell the catcher, you know, you, you got to move up a little bit. You know, you're, you're all the mm -hmm. way back here. You're not, you know, first of all, I can't be this far back myself, and, and you're not doing your team any good because the ball's yeah. dropping by the time it gets to you. Yeah. And coaches go, wow, wow, nice. And I said, hey, I'm one of the few that would do that. I said, I'll do it quietly. I won't let anybody really mm -hmm. know. But I'll, if I do it for your team, I'm going to do it mm -hmm. for their team. I said, yeah. I'm not just going to show one side to, to the picture because that's not right. It's not right. Yeah. right. It's not right. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for coming up. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Thank, thank, thank you, you so very much. much. It's a pleasure. That's, uh, that's yeah. for you. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll wear it. <laughs> when we come back, no, on, I'll definitely wear it. When we come back on Gazette Sports, we're going to talk about some national sports and some pro stuff, and that's coming up right after this. Contact Greg Schenker of Ballsy Law School Realty for all your real estate needs. Call Greg Schenker at area code 609 214 2773. Di Donato Family Fun Center is a beautifully renovated place that's fun for the whole family, featuring the Alley Restaurant, the Gutter Bar, Galactic Golf, video games, and bowling lanes. Welcome back to Gazette Sports. We're sponsored by 54 Fitness. Now we're going to run some national sports. Uh, let's talk a little Major League Baseball. I mean, the Phillies, you know, swept Arizona, which was yeah. a little, little surprising, I thought. Yeah, I was a little shocked by thought. that. You know, a, you know, Diamondbacks team is kind of struggling a little bit. I mean, I think yeah, they've they got been higher up expectations. Than, they did. People thought and, they were going to be a playoff team. Uh, They're 10, 12 games under. Absolutely. But I mean, they got they added Shelby Miller, who's mm -hmm. more or less been terrible. He's on the DL, yeah. has not pitched well when he's actually pitched. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I mean, I, I guess when you look at the Phillies, I mean, I, Treading water, really? Somewhat. I mean, for the, they went through a real rough stretch there. It's nice mm -hmm. to see them get a couple wins this week. And they actually scored some runs, which was a change. Mm -hmm. uh, they won that opening game. I think it was 8 nothing. Yeah. I know this coming weekend, 4th of July weekend, the Royals come in, so they should have a good crowd mm -hmm. down there. People come see the World Series champions. And they got They'll Velasquez. be doing fireworks. Yeah, yeah, and they got Velasquez back. I mean, he's yeah, really, who had, had a pretty solid start. Yeah, he pitched in that 8 mm -hmm. nothing win. I think they took him out after, I think, 5, five maybe yeah. 6, but they, they knew they weren't going to use him a lot just because of the pitch mm -hmm. count. The fills were already up. Well, so they, that's what you're going to see with the younger guys, with him, like off, you know, Nola, if, if they don't send him down because mm -hmm. he hasn't thrown well the last couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, I think you're going to start seeing these guys, you know, be probably beyond pitch counts and innings limits and that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you have to see, I guess, with, with the month coming ahead, I mean, about a month, today's July 1st, we're taping this. So, you know, a month of the trade deadline. And we'll have to see, you know, not only what the Phillies do, but what some of the other contenders kind of do. Because, I mean, right now, I think the division races are starting to shape up a little bit. Yeah, what do you think about around the majors? I mean, what are you looking uh, at? I'm, yeah, I mean, Cubs, obviously, the, the, the Cubs the obviously, runners, yeah. the front runner. Yeah, the front runner. 25 games over 500, mm -hmm. whatever they are coming in this week. Uh, you know, a team that, you know, has been rumored to be in on a lot of different guys. You know, I know there's talk that they want to maybe trade, make a trade with Milwaukee, bring Ryan Braun in at a bat. Uh, they're talking with the Yankees about either Chapman or Miller to come in. And you're not just, these aren't guys you're just talking about as, like, little pieces. Those no, are, the, like, the, 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 I think the top Epstein, ten guys in their position. And yeah, the, we, the Yankees guys are probably two of the best three or four absolutely. relievers well, in the league. Well, that, that, that I think that's going to shape the trade market this year. I, I think it's going to come down to, you know, 
do are the Yankees going to be sellers? You know, or, or do they think that maybe they, they have think an they outside have, yeah. shot and maybe making a wild card kind of thing? Because I don't think they're going to win the division. No, I don't. Right I now. just don't think their offense is good enough. I don't I mean, think so they're, either. They're, they're starting to get towards that territory where the Phillies were the last couple of years. I mean, they're running out. Well, that's thirty-eight year olds in the starting yeah. lineup. I mean, there's every no, day. There, there's no, there's no big. Be- well, Beltran's having a nice year, he but he's hurt again. Yeah. You know, he pulled a hamstring. Yeah, you know, but other than him, nobody's really hitting in their lineup. They're, they're starting pitching. Once you get past Tanaka, mm-hmm. who's pretty much a five inning guy at this point, you know, Pineda's been very up and down. I mean, Pineda had a nice start in his last start. He struck out ten or eleven yeah. in his last start. But I mean, you know, you look at the rest of that rotation. You know, Nova's been. Terrible, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, CC Sabathia has been okay, but you know. You, I don't know how long you expect that to continue. Exactly, for. as you say, you think it's like a matter of time before he kind of implodes a little bit, you know. So to me, I mean, I, I think the Yankees just have too many holes. To me, if, if I'm if I'm Brian Cashman, and I'm sitting on Chapman as a free agent at the end of the year, or I'm sitting on Andrew Miller who's signed, I think, for the next two seasons. You're thinking about what you can get for Chapman at that point. Exactly, I'm, I'm looking to shop one, if not both, of these guys, and maybe kind of restock my farm system. Maybe I can get some major league talent. I mean, if I look at the Cubs roster. You know, maybe I can get a Kyle Schwarber. Maybe I can get, like, a Baez. Or and if you're like the that. Yankees, you have to think about doing that. These, well, absolutely. these young guys are talking about in position players, mm-hmm. not because, relievers. Because I, I think the Yankees have some young pieces. I think their middle infield with Castro and I guess it's Didi Gregorius, Gregorius at shortstop. Yeah. I think those are two guys that can kind of they can build their infield around that. I think they need a third baseman. I think Headley's kind of giving them nothing right now. Yeah, they you gave know, him a lot. They gave him plenty of money, but he's exactly, not giving them you know, much. is giving them nothing at first base. No, nah, he's, he's pretty Tashera's much is a guy that I think if – He's back on the roster now. He's off the DL. I think if he starts swinging a bat a little bit, he's a they guy that could probably land move. something for him. Yeah, you know, they might be able to trade him to a contender, a Kansas City or somebody. Maybe could use a bat, mm-hmm. but they could DH him, you know, and keep the wear and tear up. And plus, I mean, when he's healthy, he plays a good first base. I mean, the guys want a better first baseman. So I mean, but so I think I think that's going to kind of shape a lot of the trade market. The other thing is going to be, you know, do, does Oakland put Sonny Gray on the market? Does yeah, because the they're team. underperforming. Yeah. They're ten or twelve games on. Do under. the Braves put the Tehran kid on on the market? I mean, because those would probably be the two pitchers everybody would want. Yeah, yeah, you because know, they're young, and they're, they're good, they're they're good, good pitchers. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's going to cost you a lot. I mean, you, like, like, like we saw, when you saw what the Phillies got for Kenny Giles. Yeah, you know, so who has seen, not even pissed really for yeah, Houston? Who, who, so. You know, yeah, Houston barely uses it yeah. anymore. I mean, the guys are an afterthought there. I mean, Houston's using like a bullpen by committee kind of thing right now with a bunch of different guys like Will Harris. And, and they're starting to play right. well too. You they are keep, starting to keep, keep an eye out for them. Now. They came into the year as one of the World Series favorites, mm-hmm. struggled out yeah, of the gate, but Correa they're is finally hot. starting to come around a little bit. Altuve I think they've won thirteen of fifteen, MVP. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Them, them in Cleveland. I mean, yeah, Cleveland's won fourteen in a row as we're taping this. Indians are on a tear, so. Yeah, that's a team that, you know, I, I kind of thought Detroit was going to be maybe the team to beat in the Central. Now it looks like the Indians may I think that Indian staff is just, you get Kluber, then mm-hmm. you get Carrasco, and you get Salazar. Salazar. Yeah, I mean, you're, the top you're three's three, real, three real aces good. at the top pretty exactly. much. Exactly, and they're a team that, that will probably, I, I keep hearing them maybe linked to Jay Bruce from okay. Cincinnati. Add another bat in that you, lineup. Because right now the Indians outfield is kind of kind of a mess. Brantley's on a DL. I guess Rajai Davis is getting a lot mm-hmm. of playing time in center field for them. But, I mean, playing you know, Chisenhall yeah, a lot. Chisenhall's playing I mean, a lot. Bruce I mean, will play over any of those exactly. guys. Exactly. I mean, if they were to get a Chase Bruce, they could right stick fielder, him in so. one of the corner spots. Yeah. And, I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a plus defender. I mean, the guy's a better defensive He's a great arm. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and he's, you know, coming off a, a kind of subpar year last year, I think he's hitting around 285 this year. You know, he's got maybe 20 home runs. Yeah, I was going to say, so, he's had 30 home run years yeah, in the I mean, bigs I mean, the, before, guy, so. the guy's a big-time power hitter. Like you said, he's a, a, a Really good defensive player. He's he's got stuck in the rut that the Reds are now. They're, they're underachieving. They're not very good over the exactly. last couple of years. So people forget about guys like that when and, their team's not and, any good. And, and a guy who you know, not not the cheapest contract, but it's something that maybe Cincinnati eats a little bit of salary. You can dump him you know, a little easier. They could dump yeah. him on a team like Cleveland. I think he would really help Cleveland out a lot. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But I mean, you know, again, we'll, we'll talk more Major League Baseball on the races and 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 some of the trades that that line stuff as, as August first approaches. NFL, you know, you got a few, few more weeks before training camp opens up. I mean, you know, getting I guess, close. Yeah, you know, I mean, teams are kind of right now, kind of fine tuning their rosters and, and and getting getting the pieces in place for when these things open. Anything you're looking forward to when the Eagles start camp? Anything specifically? <laughs> I don't know. There's so much going on with them. It's like it's well, like yeah. a never ending circus over mm-hmm. there. I guess I'm just anxious to see how the quarterback thing plays out. I, you know, yeah. Bradford's going to start, so that's not yep. going to be a surprise. But. I'm, not looking forward to training camp. I think a couple games into the year because I think they're going to underachieve. I don't know if you'd even call it underachieve. I don't know what people are projecting them around the country to be. But I, what do you think? If Bradford comes out as a couple horrible games, what are they going to do? They signed Chase Daniel to this deal. Do, mm-hmm. Is there any chance Bradford gets yanked? I mean, uh, how long is his leash this year? I don't know. I mean, I, he didn't play bad last year, but I'm talking to. You know, quarterbacks take the blame. Yeah, so, you I, know, if they
you brought in Daniels as a backup. You, you on drafted, a three-year deal. Yeah. For $20 million. Exactly. It's not like they he, just gave this guy a million anywhere. bucks. Yeah. You, you, you drafted a quarterback, and you traded up and gave up stuff to draft Wentz. You know, in, in and the then told draft. Bradford that the guy is, your job's not yeah. at risk, but you drafted a guy number two. I mean, exactly. I mean, I, it's I'm pretty not, much writing on the wall. I mean, I, I don't know what Doug Peterson, what kind of leash he's going to have with Bradford. And, and the thing I, th- I think the risk you take with, with Bradford is that if you say, say, say like you said, say you start one and three, one and four, and you say, okay, we need to make a change. And, and, and you could honestly say that it has to do with the quarterback. Yeah, right? like he's not been playing well at all. You know, and yeah. you say, okay, we got to make a change. Do you go to Wentz? Or, or do you, or do I don't you, think or do they'll go to Wentz. Games? I think they would go to Daniel. That's what I, think. I don't think Wentz is going to play. It just yeah. doesn't make sense. I, mean, cause me, I, I know Bradford and Daniel aren't exactly like world beaters, but when, you're not going to play a rookie over those two. No. They've had NFL playing time. They're serviceable mm-hmm. slash good at times. I don't think you'll see Wentz at all this season, unless they both got hurt, obviously. But yeah, that's I, a I, different I, story. I think, I, I think injuries would make you play Wentz. But the, the thing I kind of I, – and I hope, you know, not being a big Eagles fan – I hope four Eagles fans. I hope it doesn't turn into one of these things where a third of the way through the season, now you're going to this sort of tag team thing between Sam uh, Bradford and Yeah, Chase they always Daniels. say if you have two QBs, you don't <laughs> yeah. have one. So. You know, where, where it's like, well, you know, you know, we're, we're going to pull Bradford, we're going to make the other guy the starter, and then, you know, two weeks later you say, oh, well, we're, we're doing we're all going we'll, back. We'll yeah. go back to Bradford. I don't, that would not be good. You know, and, and, and I don't, I'm curious to see if it does happen, if, if Bradford gets, gets pulled for something other than an injury early in the year. I'm curious to see what his reaction is. If you ever see him again. Yeah, yeah. because because this is a guy who you know is not happy they drafted Carson Wentz. No. You, you know is not he wasn't happy gonna that, come to that, that, camp. Yeah. I mean, it isn't, I don't think he's totally sold on the fact that they want him to be the starter coming in anyway. And I can see where he has that thought. Too. Exactly. Can so you? I mean, yeah. you have to kind of oh, yeah. agree so, with him. So, so, so if they pull him, you got to think to yourself, I mean, is this the kind of situation where he where he, where he walks out on him or does something stupid like that? Yeah. Or, or does he kind of like pull the whole – you know, if you guys don't want me to start to trade me kind of a thing. You know, you, you don't really see too many in-season NFL trades, especially no. not quarterback. Never. But, uh, I mean, you never know. We'll have to see how it plays out with them. Um, you know, move on to NBA. You know, free agency, you're coming up pretty soon. You know, I guess the big talk is what's going to go started on. Started last night. Yeah, started last night. Yeah. You know, what's going to go on with Kevin Durant? You know, I guess he's the, he's the big name guy mm-hmm. out there. Um, you know. A, a lot of the guys that they talked about as kind of that second tier I saw overnight have mm-hmm. already re-signed. Yeah. Uh, Hassan Whiteside, the center, he's staying in Miami. Miami. Uh, Batum, Nicholas mm-hmm. Batum, who was with Charlotte, he's staying in Charlotte. DeMar yeah. DeRozan staying in Toronto. Toronto. So those were kind of the three, I think, second tier guys. They're all yeah. staying, but and, it, it's going to come down to Durant. Like yeah, you said, and, and who, and I talk, think we said he's going to stay. We well, yeah, the talk heading in the weekend was that it looks like it's re- he's probably real close to deciding not staying in Oklahoma City. Yeah, and I think so. they said he's probably going to sign a one or two year deal, deal yeah. with like an option on the mm-hmm. second year. And then they'll go from there. But yeah. I, I think in 2017 you'll see him playing in Oklahoma uh, yeah. again. And, don't and, you? And, and I think I think I mean with LeBron James as we kind of expected opted out of his deal, but I think he comes back too. Yeah, I don't know. think that means anything. Yeah, and that's more of like a money thing because now he can sign like a max. Oh, the, he'll get the max money exactly. Which yeah. I I don't know everything specifically about all the contract stuff, but I know this year in the NBA is like the highest margin of maxes they've yeah. ever had or something. Yeah, so I, I think guys I saw that you, like you look as being decent are going to get more money than like superstars are getting paid just yeah. because of how it's working I think, out. I think I saw something where I think by, by opting out and then just re-signing with Cleveland, he's going to make himself like 20 more million or yeah. something over over. And what do you, they're, they're not going to say no. Exactly. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're so, basically you know, giving so him 20 million more dollars th- th- there for free. You go. And, yeah. and, and, and he knew that going in, the way they structure the contracts. Like yeah, that. it's still a business. I mm-hmm. don't I don't blame the guy. I mean, they're going to give him 20 million more to stay. What's the yeah. difference? I mean, you think you know, six, Sixers looking at free agents? They've talked about Harrison Barnes, Barnes. a little bit. I, I just don't know if it makes a lot of sense yet. I yeah. mean, he's I know he's young and he's good, but he never was the number one guy mm-hmm. there at all. I mean, yeah. he was like the four. Yep. He had Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond mm-hmm. Green, and then him. If he came to the Sixers, he would automatically be the number one. Yep. I don't know how high I am on that turnaround. Yeah. I don't know I mean, what you think about that. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess... I don't know if I'm a free agent. I don't know what the attraction would be. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing really yet. That's I, the thing. I, I think if they add some guys, it could be through trades. They're, they're still taught that they're maybe shopping Noel or or Oka for trying to get a point guard, mm-hmm. which I think is really a need that they kind of have at this point. I yeah, because Ish Smith is gone. He recently yeah. signed uh, with the Pistons, with the Pistons last night, yeah. actually. So yeah, so we'll have to see how that plays out with the Sixers. I mean, like you say they are actively shopping guys, and they want to try and maybe make a deal. I mean, I guess the question becomes now that now that sort of the the, the process kind of thing is sort of maybe nearing the end. 
Yeah, are, it's supposed are, to be are, over. Are, are they looking to turn around real quickly, or are they moving? I hope. Just keep I, I, I can't do many more years of just <laughs> nine win teams. It's getting tough to watch. There you go. We'll have a question. We'll have a question or two about the Sixers later on in the final five. We'll wrap up the show, and that's coming up right after this. Maplewood is known for their homemade spaghetti. Their comfortable atmosphere and seating with complimentary bread and salad. Along with great service to make it feel like home. At Maplewood, you are sure to get that Italian family love. Fifty Four Fitness is the gym that has everything you need. From various workout equipment, treadmills, to many weight machines, Fifty Four Fitness will get you in shape. Welcome back to Gazette Sports Week, sponsored by 54 Fitness, and now we'll wrap up with the Final Five. Entering the week, the Hot Shots were a half a game ahead of Margate in the ACBL standings. Will the team hold on for the top seed in the playoffs? What do you think, Dan? I mean, it's going to come down to that game. It's that next Friday night, next Friday, Friday 8th. The July 8th, they go down to Margate. Yeah, I, <coughs> I'm, I'm not sure that they do, to tell you no. the truth. Um, you know, I, I, I think you've seen them kind of slip up a couple times the last couple weeks. I mean, you know, splitting with Egg Harbor City last week, although EHC is playing pretty well. You know, I, I'm, I'm worried about this Northfield game next week. I think this is the kind of team that's a little bit hot right now. It's going to be motivated to come up and kind of make some noise. And they lost two of their better pitchers right now. So exactly, that's, that's yeah. what's really going to hurt. So, I mean, you know, yeah, playing without Billy Jackson and Zach Warren is going to hurt them a little bit. You know, I, I think the pitching, which at the beginning of the year looked so strong, is now kind of thinned out. And, I mean, you know, can, can they you – know, they should be back to full strength maybe by the playoffs. But, I mean, down the stretch, I mean, you're entering, like, the final kind of three weeks of the season right now. Are they going to have the pitching to kind of hold off a Margate team where Margate doesn't have to worry about, you know, having college guys that are going to play overseas in tournaments and guys getting signed by independent league teams. But mm-hmm. Margate's going to be at full strength, you know, barring any injury until the end of the year. So I think it's going to be kind of tough for the hot shots to maybe pull off that one seat. Hamilton's Little League Softball All-Stars won the District 16 title last week. Can the girls bring home a Section 4 championship? I mean, we talked about it a little mm-hmm. bit. You think they can I, get through? They, I they're they're putting up runs, obviously. Yeah, they I mean, scored sections, seven in the second the other night, you said. So. Yeah, so sectionals are a little bit tougher than, than districts because sectionals yeah, you're naturally. playing. Well, you're playing a bunch of games in a short period of time. I mean, districts are kind of spread out a little bit. You know, they had like three, four days in between games because you're waiting to see who wins this, who wins mm-hmm. that. And, you know, in the sectionals, you know, typically it's, you know, you play today. If you lose, you play tomorrow. You win, you play the next day. You know, they, they play a whole tournament in – just because they only have so much time, they yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of you know, games so, to get in. so I mean, at that point, you know, things can kind of maybe get a little bit out of control for you. You are playing better teams too at that point. You know, yeah, because you're playing the yeah. teams that I mean, got through yeah. at their division. Every, all, all six teams in that tournament are district champions. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, so you have to you, you face that too as well. I mean, I, I think they can easily. I mean, they've done it before in the last couple of years, so we'll see how it plays out. Now that we're into July, and the Phillies are clearly out of the race. What should the team focus be as the tread li- as the trade deadline approaches? Everything I read says they might not be huge sellers just because mm-hmm. I don't know if they have a lot to sell. Mm-hmm. Not because they probably don't want to, just because I don't know if they have a lot that's really attractive yeah. to teams right now. They're not going to trade Nola Velasquez. That's yeah. their future. So those guys aren't on the market. Mm-hmm. We've talked about Hellickson. I guess yeah. a, a, he, a, there's teams that would be happy to have him, let Absolutely. him pitch down the stretch. Um, I don't know if there's been a lot of talk about his interest. I don't know if you've heard anything. But. Yeah, I think there are teams that are interested. I mean, I, I think a team like you'll get the team with the Red Sox, who once you get past Price, who've been kind of up and down all year, and, and Stephen Wright's been a nice pitcher for them. The rest of the rotation, I mean, the, the, the four or five guys in their rotation have been horrible all yeah, year. Yeah, he, he's better than the four or yeah, five I mean, guys. You know, I mean, they, they, threw, they threw Eduardo Rodriguez out there the other day. The guy's pitching to an eight and a half ERA. Yeah, I mean, they Hel- sent him down like yeah, right after they I mean, pulled him, right? <laughs> Helgson can do a little bit better than that. Yeah, you know, so he hasn't they, been bad. Yeah, I mean, so there's going to be some teams that have some interest there. I mean, as far as other pieces to move, I mean, unless they move some of those bullpen guys. I don't think there's a know, whole lot to get moved. Yeah, I, I don't think there's too much. None of their position players, unless somebody gets desperate for a catcher, and say, yeah, wants to take Chooch off your yeah. hands. You know, I don't think that's He makes I, a lot of money, though, is the yeah, problem. I, I think the focus for the Phillies, you know, for this month in July is probably just going to be to kind of maybe find some consistency. You know, get, get some of the younger guys in, you know, maybe, 
If they could find a taker for Ryan Howard, move him, but I don't think they will. So no, we'll not see. at this point. Yeah. Will the Sixers add an impact free agent this offseason? I don't think so. I, I don't. We talked about how they've talked, had discussions with Harrison mm-hmm. Barnes or about him, but mm-hmm. I, I think a lot of that is just. I mean, say if you're an NBA reporter, you can say the Sixers have interest in anybody because they have so much money to spend. Yeah, it doesn't think, actually and, mean and that the they're like Lakers out there are the signing the guy. The cap, yeah, right? so. I mean, they're, of course they're interested in guys. They've mm-hmm. been horrible for five years. They want to get better, but I don't think it means necessarily that they're going to sign. Yeah, I, I don't know that they're going to get any kind of impact guy. I, I think what will happen is mo- most of the big name guys will go early. Most of the sort of you know role player guys that could be maybe impact guys somewhere will probably sign elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And I think what you'll see is then you'll see the Sixers kind of pick among the scraps, more or less to add depth. Yeah. You know, they kind of build their bench around maybe two or three guys that are sort of you know veteran type guys that can kind of come in and give them a couple minutes here. Yeah, you're, I wouldn't mind Smith that. type guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. So yeah. And finally, St. Joe holds red white game. The Eagles begin training camp soon. How excited are you to see another football season begin? Always excited. Once, uh, once you get into July and August, that's pretty much all the talk. I mean, what are you looking forward to most this yeah, year I, at I, any I, level? High school, I think college, so. I, mean, I, I, think it, I think it's interesting to see you know how things go out. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to maybe go see that red white game tonight. And hopefully, they play it and you know, the weather holds up and kind of get a good look at you know maybe what St. Joe's going to look at. I mean, St. Joe's going to be young, so mm-hmm. you know, yeah, they're going to be starting what a lot of juniors, yeah, a, lot a, a lot of sophomores. A lot of sophomores will be playing over there. Same thing over at Hamilton. Hamilton's going to have some change, especially in the backfield next year. Yeah, they're losing uh, all three of their primary running backs pretty much. Yeah, right? and, and I think I think you're looking at this year at least you know locally on the football scene. You know, both teams now in the West Jersey Football League. Uh, the schedules are you know St. Joe. A lot of familiar opponents are playing a lot of those Cape Atlantic teams, but for Hamilton, really I'm, a lot I'm, of new faces. Yeah. A lot of new faces and a lot of new teams on that schedule. A brutal schedule, really top to bottom. And there's really no layups on that schedule at all. You know, uh, teams. You know, you're playing Cherokee, you're playing Shawnee. I mean, Williamstown. These are powerhouse, big time programs with bigger rosters too. Is the thing exactly. we talked about I mean, that last be, year. It's about the depth. I yeah. mean, these kids. There's teams that have 70 kids mm-hmm. on the roster. So there's not a lot of people getting tired on Absolutely. the field. There's a lot of switching going on. Yeah, but both teams are going to face a lot of challenges this year. It's going to be a really interesting year on a high school field. Uh, you talk, you know, the Hampton Hawks will start. You know, it looks like it's probably going to be their last season playing over at Hampton Lake Park before they move over to Capella Field. So that'll be nice too. You know, see how those guys play. And then you, you talk about the Eagles. College mm-hmm. football obviously is coming on. You know, so I mean, you your know, Vikings are supposed to have a good year. Should, so we'll should see have about a pretty that. good year too. Yeah. So you know, a lot to be excited about. I mean, you know, you know, July is when all that stuff sort of starts mm-hmm. getting in full gear. You know, so I think it'll be fun to watch. And. Uh, that wraps up another edition of Gazette Sports Week, sponsored by 54 Fitness. We thank Rick Seppi for coming up and talking to us a little bit this week. Uh, when we come back next week, we'll talk more uh, local sports action and hot shots. We'll maybe talk some Phillies, Eagles, that kind of stuff. And I'll be coming up next week, so be sure to check it out. Back pain? See Doc Manny today. Dr. Emmanuel Sanfilippo is a certified chiropractor and sports practitioner. With more than 25 years' experience, He knows what you need to feel like yourself again.